Thank you, Professor Borea, for your speaker. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Good morning, colleagues. Good morning, students. Uh, it's a pleasure uh, for me to be here. Uh, I want to thank the scientific committee for inviting me to be present in your conference. I want to congratulate all the organizing committee for this uh, meeting, and I will uh, share my participation. Let me see. I think you are not seeing my board. Are you seeing my board? No. Uh, yes, ma'am. The board is visible. Uh, with my uh, presentation, no. Uh, no, I think you have shared the white screen, so you can okay. be shared again the, by selecting that PPT. Uh, yes, I think it's now. Okay, are you seeing now my presentation? Yeah, it's coming. It's coming? Yeah. Is the full screen already? Uh, no, so you can just click on the three dot and uh, disable the presenter view. Is already done? No. Uh, no. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now I think it's a slideshow. Yeah, it's coming perfectly fine now. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I want to congratulate all the speakers uh, that presented the, uh, the conference before me. And today I bring you uh, some concerns that are very present in the practition of a forensic odontology. I will speak about dental age assessment and age estimation concerned to the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals for, for 2030. Um, one of the goals say, a proof of a legal identity is crucial for the protection of their rights and for the assess of justice and social. And this goal, say that until 2030, we need to provide legal identity for all persons, including birth registration. And here we have our uh, practitioner, like forensic odontologists, that works with age assessment and with age estimation. What we have related to age assessment and to age estimation in the present. We have living people, we have cadaver, when we are related um, to the living people, we have asylum seekers, we have undocumented persons. When we have undocumented persons and asylum seekers together, we have child and adults. And when we have child, we have unaccompanied child alone. When we speak about uh, uh, age assessment and age estimation, we have different concepts of age according to the field of law. It's a criminal law that we are making the forensic uh, examination. It is for the common law, it's for the civil law, it's for the asylum seekers law, it's for the law that protects the children and young adults in danger. Then we have other big issue, the issue concern or related to the threshold minimum of age. And then we have different concepts, chronological age, age estimation and age assessment. When we speak about age assessment, what we have to provide a result to a, a judge. We have different biological parameters. We have the tooth, we have bone, we have the sexual maturity observation, we have the physical development. These are all medical methods. However, several we can use because they are scientific. Others we cannot use or we shall not use because they are not scientific. These methods that are based on biological parameters give us age estimation of the chronological age. Then we have age assessment by other parameters that are in the law that give the age estimation of the chronological age. 
These methods we called no medical methods, like the physical appearance. If you look to me, probably you say you have this age, professor. The other person will say you have other age. This is our physical appearance for age assessment. Then we have the interview, what we call the social interview, also uh, by, made by a social assistant. This is in the uh, another uh, line that you have social service assessment. And then you have the psychology interview. These are all including in the procedure for age assessment in no medical methods. Okay, now we are doctors and we have to have some considerations related to age estimation when we, are, when we are doing this age estimation in living persons, specifically when we do in the child, undocumented and unaccompanied. What are the principles that are underlying in any procedures that, that we do like a doctor and when we do it inside a medical legal examination are the best interests of the child. This means at the benefit of the doubt, the presumption of the minor age, since the, the court asked for a, a, a forensic examination for age assessment, we have to say to that person that the presumption of the minor age is still until the end of the process. Then we have the autonomy, we have the informed consent. We have to say to the person that is in the forensic examination what we are doing, what we will do, and to explain that um, it's necessary because we need to protect if it is a child. This is the best interest of a child. Then we have the other principle that is the application of, of a non-invasive method. For instance, we use radiation and you, we use the principle of ALARA. The, as low as reasonable achievable for us to see the image. Then we have the non-maleficiency, the beneficiency and the justice from uh, uh, what we are protecting, the child or the adult. Okay, another issue. When we need to perform age assessment, I told you we have a lot of biological parameters, but we as uh, doctors, mainly the forensic odontologists that in the clinical uh, perspective, we use bones for age assessment for orthodontic treatment, we can use the two main uh, biological parameters for methods for age assessment. This is bone methods and dental methods. What we think when we, when we use these parameters? Oh, the method is only one, no. We have a variability of methods, including in the bones, in the dental methods, and we have different occurrences of each method. Is this the only, the only aspect of in the variability? No. We have in the dental methods, such as direct methods, indirect methods, invasive methods, non-invasive methods, dextrative methods, non-dextrative methods. Inside this one, we have the methods that you, we see, the morphology, uh, by eyes, macroscopic methods. We need the microscopic, we call microscopic methods. We have the chemical methods, we have genetic methods. The, we have a variability of methods that use the parameters teeth. Then we have a confundable variables. And this makes that the accuracy can be lower or higher because we have subadult methods, we have adult methods, we have the gender, we have the population affinity, we have the confounder variables such as genetic factors, environment factors. These last factors, they are most uh, important for the bone methods that for the dental methods. But this is very important because when we have a variability of methods with different accuracy, what we shall do in the presence of this variability first, we have to make an evaluation of the biologic evidence for the forensic application, such as bones or teeth. Inside the teeth, what we have to uh, say to ourselves, what I can classify, classify to have a good method with higher accuracy. First, the reliability. The method that we choose must demonstrate consistent results in order 
to draw the desired conclusion. Then we have to choose the methods according to the repeatability. This, this means that the method that we choose for age assessment, uh, uh, the same method and under the same condition, we can obtain the same results and conclusions. Then we have the third principle, the objectivity. And as you know, the objectivity of the method is defined by the sensitivity of the method, the specificity of the method, the independence of the study that we choose to justify the method and the sample size of the study. Then we have other two principles, they are very important. We always speak when we are doing our research, precision and accuracy. The precision is the way that we do in the same uh, different times, the same uh, measurement in the same object, and we have the same results. This is the precision. This is important for us because we are make age assessment several times using the same method and probably the same individual in the same stage. But what we want also, or with a much, uh, 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 with a much uh, valorization for the age assessment is the accuracy of the method. And what this means? It's the agreement between what I measure and what is the reality. This means this, we, have to have, we need to have accuracy between the age assessment, age estimation, and the chrono chronological age. This is geocuracy. What means when we choose a method for the age assessment, tit or bone, we have to get to we have to have the objecti objectivity, the reality and the repeatability. This means that we can do the same method, me, every time that I do, or me, or Emilio, or Celine, whatever, we can do in the same way. This is very important for the harmonization of age assessment. Okay. When I speak about all this issue, when we, when we speak about um, the best forensic practitioner, what we need is given a variability of the methods and a small sample size when we perform age estimation, because most of the study, the sample size is very small, we shall do for each individual, we shall estimate the interval of age and the percentage of the accuracy of the net we use it for the calculation. This means it should be indicated to the judge how often the chronological age fall in the, in the estimated interval of age. Okay, now I will speak about some uh, concerns that we have in the present that uh, control that met, that made the quality insurance of our age assessment in all parts of Europe, that is uh, uh, three main institutions. The first is uh, the Asylum Information Database, what we call IDA, uh, um, is managed by the European Council of the Refugees and Exiles across 23 countries, main from European countries, but then we have Switzerland, Serbia, Turkey, and the United Kingdom. What uh, was the last report from IDED from 2019? It was an overview of all the practices in European countries in these uh, debriefing areas where these principles are, are at the risk of being set stepped by asylum authorities when conducting edge assessments. They say in this report, see what they say. The over-reliance of states on medical methods of age determination, a big error because we don't determine the age, we estimate the age. Exposing children to readily to intrusive examination of dubious accuracy. And they are treating self-declared minors as adults until their age has been confirmed. Probably this is not in all countries, but some countries are doing this. Okay, then we have the second institution 
that is called the European Asyl uh, Office of uh, uh, that are uh, working since 2010, and uh, they have um, they had uh, edited a new age assessment report in 2018, and they defend what we call a multidisciplinar and holistic approach uh, that combines different methods. And they recommend this and this in this guide. Now, I will uh, um, go by several slides and I, I will raising some questions that are inside this guide. Probably we need to have a more active participation as a forensic odontologist because we have several concepts that are not correct when they, uh, um, they approach this guide. Okay, what they say in this new guide from 2008. Age assessment remains a complex process. It's true, it's with possible far-reaching consequence for applicants undergoing the assessment. Age assessment methods and process differ across member states. This is true. And really believe multidisciplinary and right compliance age assessment process are not always guaranteed. And this is true. And this is this was the background why they in 2070 make an update that was published in 2018. And this um, is very important when we see who were the persons that were in this working group. And if you see the persons that were responsible for this European Asyl Support Office to edit this guide were social workers. Forensic anthropologists, radio, radiology researchers, as well as police officers and reception uh, uh, officials. I ask, are we talking about a practical guide for age estimation? Where are the health professionals, such as the doctors and the dentists? Where are the principles that we say, the principles of the lying, the medical examination? Where are the best interests of the child? They don't listen to the doctors and to the dentists that are responsible for the mainly uh, age assessment through the biological parameters, bone and teeth. Okay, as you know, age is much part of a person's identity as their name, nationality, citizenship and family states. Okay, let's check the first principle that I told you, the benefit of the doubt, presumption of minor age. This is applicable in the following case. And we feel, if we go according to the guide of ISO, we maintain until the, uh, our conclusion in our report, if we are inconclusive, the results, we have to exemption the minor of age. We do it like that. Then we have the autonomy, the informed consent. This picture, a picture from several uh, forensic examination that I did. And if you see all of them, they had applied for Brazil application. They came in for the examination with a representative, a legal representative, representative and also with a language uh, translator if we need inside our uh, our um, our forensic examination. Okay, this is one of report uh, I performed since uh, um, I report uh, 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 forensic age estimation. Uh, I was responsible from uh, the report from 2006 until 2018. And if you see, uh, I put in, inside my report. If you see, it was accompanied by the, represent, the legal representation. And then I put inside my report, it was informed about the content of this forensic examination in accordance with European standards, which embody the protection. This is one of the last uh, report. Then we have another concept in the principles, invasive, but inside this guide, uh, we have also other concept that is intrusive. What it means, the term invasive? We use invasive commonly for the medical procedures to indicate that we introduce something inside 
the body or it, something inside the body cavity includes also the cutting tissue and what it means intrusive methods uh, can we apply as a sign of invasive as the this guide from ESSO did do no we can because intrusive is um, uh, something that we go uh, and um, uh, go through the uh, uh, inside the person in the emotional way uh, in, inside the privacy of the person is uh, uh, the religious principles from this person the cultural things from the person very different things and if we go to the medical methods and if we want to classify the estimation of sexual parameters, this is intrusive method. When inside this guide, they speak about that radiological methods are intrusive methods, this is not true. This is not an intrusive method. Probably we can say it's an invasive method, but it's not so invasive method that we probably take some blood sample to see the alcohol inside the sample, okay? When we speak about invasive and intrusive way to choose the best method to be applied for age assessment, we can say, concerned to this reason, the choice of the less intrusive method and age assessment process that, that take into account the needs of the applicant still remains a problem for the authorities. Okay, what they say, if we go, you can see that uh, this guide say that the first step that we need to use is a non-medical method according to the holistic approach. Then we have the medical methods without the radiation free. And if you see, we have the physical development here. Is this method uh, a curated method? Do you think it's necessary based on evidence that results will be important for the age assessment? I don't think so. Then we have the medical uh, uh, methods, methods where we have the radiation. Okay, what they say, we have to combine the intrusiveness with the accuracy and the recommended method is correct, will be the low intrusiveness and the highly accurate. Now I ask, where is the best of interest of the child if we put in the medical method the physical development assessment? Okay. If we look to the uh, last report from 2018, we can see different countries with several aspects using in the age assessment. Some only use the no medical methods, others use medical methods. And we can choose whatever we want, want because we don't have harmonization. Okay. Okay. This is in Portuguese. I don't want you to understand the Portuguese, but I just want to say this is a report from 2019, October 2019. And in this report, they use all the methods, including the sexual evaluation. And in, in the conclusion, they say that the, the methods were so discrepant in two or three years that they could be um, they could be all together only say that the age was more or weak, equal to 18 years old. Why they use it? Dental methods, uh, radiological methods, and sexual methods and physical methods because we have somatical. It's here, corporal measures, okay, and the mat sexual maturation. Why? Is this a holistic approach? Is not this intrusive for the child? Is this for the best interest of the child? Why not to perform like all most of the countries from the north of Europe? Okay, this is to this is a situation that's opposite to this last situation. This is a report from the uh, uh, forensic practitioner of a doctor that is from the dental field. And this is what the judge expected. They did a clinical examination, the dental radiological, the bone radiological. And what he said 
is based on evidence and with a minor error for the judge. This is what we want for the best interest of the child. Okay, because when we are practitioners, what we have is a child say, I am a children. And this is a way that a, a doctor can see, oh God, I'm making observation and I can see the dental deciduous. And this is a way, a very spontaneous way to perform a clinical observation. This is my practical. Okay, this is the first slide. Uh, I only speak about the uh, different uh, aspects in the, in the legal way to approach what is chronological age, age estimation, age assessment. I only speak about in the asylum seekers concerned to the law and to the law concerned to protection of children and young adults. We have other issue. We can speak this in other lectures. The other issue that we have is the threshold a threshold a minimum of age. This is one of the most controversial issue uh, that we have also in present because we have different ways um, to, uh, uh, to approach this uh, uh, threshold minimum of age because we have different uh, minimum of age in each country. We have different laws uh, with different age. This is other talking. Now, I just want to uh, to give me, uh, I want you to give me, Professor Gouray, I mean my time, to make a little presentation where I'm from. Uh, I'm from the Faculty of Dental Medicine of University of Lisbon. Uh, our dental education in Portugal is very pleasure because Portugal is a countryside, as you know. Uh, our uh, dental uh, school was uh, um, uh, is starting in 1975. It was a cooperation between the University of Bergen and it was supported by the Norwegian government. Uh, we have a very uh, uh, friendship with the Norway people. Then in 1982, our dental school uh, came inside the Univers University of Lisbon as Faculty of Dental Medicine. We have in the University of Lisbon 18 schools, one university hospital. We have all the facilities for the uh, students that like to make sports, uh, and we are we are in the SMAG ranking in the second place in the America Latin American universities. In 2002, our dental faculty uh, have um, a new auditorium and another building for from the Faculty of Dental Medicine that we are in the present. How is the way that we're living inside our Faculty of Dental Medicine? I only will speak about uh, the post graduation course. We have also three pre-graduation courses, the dentistry, it's a master degree in five years. Then we have a bachelor degree in dental technology and dental hygiene. This are course of three years uh, in, the, in the program. Then we have 12 post-graduation course. Uh, concerned to this symposium, we, we have one year program in, uh, 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 in the post-graduation course in one year, concerned to the method methodologies in the forensic odontology uh, learning, and then we have the new uh, uh, specialization course. We'll start in October of this year. This will be a program from for one year. You can visit the page in this link. Uh, we have all the disciplines that are important for forensic odontology. We have 17 disciplines in this course, and we'll uh, finish in June 2022. Relating to the research feelings, we are uh, the research unit in oral, oral and biomedical science. Inside this unit that we called uh, UICOB, we have five uh, research groups, including the Forensic Dental Science Research Group, uh, where uh, uh, is based on the uh, forensic evidence that I'm the PI. And then we are integrated also in the Center of Statistics and Application of University of Lisbon that uh, we have several, um, we have several uh, fields. Uh, I hope I can show you uh, our page. You can visit our page. Uh, if you go to the English, uh, I'm sorry, it was my Apple watch. Uh, you can go to the investigation. This is uh, also in English. I cannot open now the English. But if you go to the uh, what are the research that we have, we go you go down and you have the forensic analysis 
And inside the forensic analysis, you, you have all the international working groups that we have in medical, medical legal age estimation. We have in the forensic clinical, like child abuse. Then we have uh, the human identification. In this project, we have several students that are working with uh, 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 like print scanning using the Strauman uh, uh, print scanning. We are doing uh, uh, 3D reconstruction to, uh, again, to make comparison by end and then to make a comparison by uh, machine learning. Also in age estimation, we are doing machine learning for age estimation. And then we have the International Group of Forensic Anthropology. You are welcome to visit our page. It will be a, a, a pleasure for us if you uh, want to contact us and to be a, a part of that. Then I have announcement for the Portuguese Dental Association. Um, as a doctor, if you want to be a dentist, you, we need to make our registration in dental association, in our Portuguese Dental Association. We cannot work without it. And uh, next November, we have uh, the, the Congress. Uh, we have only uh, a morning day for the forensic odontology. Uh, we have our president of IOFOS, Professor Average Berkic, that will be speaking. We have a lot of uh, presentation in English. We, you will be welcome to be present. You can submit your uh, works if you want in the site, uh, in the website from the Portuguese Dental Association. If you need some, um, if you have some doubts, you can contact me. And then I give you uh, the best uh, book that we have from this year, 2021, is the Forensic Odontostomatology. This is a book from uh, IOFUS. Uh, the editor is Professor Edward Birkic, and uh, we have Professor Lezinger, Ricardo Silva, Vilma Pinky, and Patrick Tevinsin. They are uh, the co-editors from this book. I have already my ear. Uh, you can you cannot see because of my background, but you have uh, and you can be um, you can buy it uh, in the editor that is online. Thank you very much uh, for listening to me. I hope that I uh, bring to you several issues that we have in age estimation because most of us perform a lot of research. Me and my students, I have some several students that are today here, and we do a lot of research. We publish a lot of articles, but we must be conscious that these articles and this research will be applied in the forensic practitioner. Thank you uh, so much uh, to listen to me. Thank you.